Watch out, Commissioner! One back there. Commissioner, next time you should stake out the corner and I should cover the exit. Yes, and right, we'll have to work that out. All right, buddy, let's go. It's the end of the line for you. <laughs> Charlie, better start cutting that bedboard. We'll have this out to the house in an hour for you, Mrs. McMillan. I know what it's like to have a backache. I really appreciate it. Oh, I've been sleeping on the floor for the last two nights, and my husband really hates it. Hates to sleep alone. No, he hates sleeping on the floor. Why does your husband sleep on the... Lady, I'm a friend of the commissioners. What are you doing here? Well, I, I, I followed you. You beat me. Well, I, I came in the window. You shouldn't leave them open. Burglars. I don't think I caught your name. I'm Soup Metzger. I, I got a message. S soup? The, yes, Soup. S-O-U-P. Soup like you drink. Most people say you eat soup, but you don't. You drink it. Uh, I got a message for the commissioner. Well, he should be home shortly. Would you like to come in? I can't. Then may I come in? Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Commissioner, what do you think would happen if I turned on the siren? We'll get a headache. Where? 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 Where is he? I, I gotta get back to the Ark. The Ark? I wouldn't have taken a chance like this, but it was the commissioner who saved my life. Any other lawyer, innocent or not, I get the gas chamber. I owe him. Would a drink help? No, I, I don't drink the hard stuff. Soft stuff? No stuff. Some soup, soup. Well, I, no, I, I can't. I, I gotta go. Look, tell the commissioner to meet me at the old place. Where are you going? We have a front door, you know. Oh. They might be out there. Not again. Final. You can't quit today. Why not? It's your day off. 
Okay, then I quit as of yesterday. All right. Tell me. Well, you won't believe it. I was sleeping in my own bed, it's my day off, and a strange man comes in the kitchen window. Oh, very shifty guy. The eyes, nose to one side. He walked like that. How tall was he? I don't know. I didn't get a good look at him. It's okay, Mildred. He was a friend. Friends come in through doors, not through windows. What about family? Do they get to come through doors? Oh, yeah. You know. About this friend, who was he? His name was Soup Metzger. Soup? Yeah. What did he want? Well, he had a message for you. It was very important. Well, what was it? Oh, he didn't leave it. He wanted to talk to you. He was afraid to wait. When will he be back? Oh, he's not coming back. He said for you to meet him at the old place. What old place? What old place? <laughs> I assumed you knew. I mean, if somebody says the old place, I assume it's some old place that you know. Sally, if some old friend out of your distant past said, meet me at the old place, would you know what he meant? Mm-hmm. Girls John, third floor, across from the chemistry lab. Yeah. You're gonna meet him at the Girls John? No. I used to work in the cable car power plant. Oh, no. What's wrong with the cable car power plant? Nothing. You're not going, are you? I have you? to go. If Soup says it's important, it's important. Mac! Shoes. Your house is going to be robbed tonight. Soup. Robbed? Shh. Mildred will hear you. Robbed? Mildred heard you. There's nothing to worry about, Mildred. There's a policeman stationed outside. We're going to be home tonight. Oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. Where are we going? We're going to Alex and Connie's for dessert and coffee, but first we're all meeting at the costume company. Sally. Mac. I'm the co-chairman. You can't just... I am not wearing a costume. I hate the idea. Well, at least you could wear something simple. Like a pirate's costume. I'll wear a business suit. That's a now pirate costume. 
Some soup, Sal? Oh, I'd be delighted. But I didn't think it was that funny. Oh, I didn't think it was that funny. That's the best what I ever heard. I'd like that one myself. Listen, what time will you be coming home? Long before your movie is over. We'll drop you off, Mildred. Oh, I'm meeting Agnes. Agnes? Mm. Who's Agnes? Agnes, at Hussein's new maid. Oh, oh, it's on the way. We'll pick her up. Commissioner? Yes? Can I talk to you a minute? Yes, excuse me. All we know is that we're checking out everything. I wish I knew what they were saying. And I don't think Mr. McMillan told us everything about his meeting with Soup. The policeman is telling the commissioner about a bullet. It was a 38 caliber. What bullet? The commissioner was shot at by a size 15 shoe today. They found billiard chalk on a footprint. They've got leads on a couple of suspects. I knew he was keeping something from us. The policeman says they're getting nowhere locating soup. Mildred, how do you do it? At this distance and with them mumbling like that? How do you hear everything? I'm a maid. Nobody tells us anything, but we're expected to know everything. Oh, who expects you to know everything? Other maids. Oh. Welcome. It is good to see you. Forgive me, I do not remember your face. But your blood is familiar. Tom, you look sensational. Mm, doesn't he? How does she recognize me in this makeup? What makeup? Where's Janet? Just you wait. It's a divine surprise. How's your back? Oh, it hurts. How did you know? The way you're moving. You really should do something for that. Like sleeping in a coffin with a stake through my heart. I got that bedboard you advised, doctor. It's pretty painful, Tom. Isn't there something she could take? Yes. Exercise. Fencing, for instance. I recommend it strongly. Janet, you look fabulous. Doesn't she? I've done the whole Pooh series. You should see by your. Hello, Mac. Hi, Janet. You know, you should really ask Alex to teach you how to fence because he's really a terrific teacher. He didn't take a penny for the lessons. Uh, would you like to try in your costumes? I'm not wearing any. Then you should be the smash of the party. Oh, I'd like to try mine on. Come. Alex, got a new pupil for you. My price for ladies is very unreasonable, but very pleasant. How are you, Sally? Fine. Hi, Alex. Hi, Mac. Hi. Hey! Hey! You think I look like a dog? <laughs> Whatever it is, you're the next size. Sally. Hi. Where's Mac? Oh, hi, Mac. Is Chuck here? No, I don't know where he is. He's supposed to meet me half an hour ago. Maybe he's at work. Stockbrokers never work. And at that, they quit in the middle of the afternoon. Come along, Mrs. McMillan. Let's get you suited up. <laughs> hey, Alex, where's Connie? Behind you. Marie. Marie Antoinette, my queen. Arise. You. You in the suit. Meet me in the buttery at the stroke of midnight. Let us eat cake. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Chuck. Chuck. I'm sorry I'm late, honey. Well, where were you? Oh, honey, you've got something on your jacket. Is it blood? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like blood. A cat was run over. I stopped and took it to the SPCA. The vet says he's going to be all right. That was very nice of you. You better get into your costume. <laughs> you better get into yours. What are you going to be, Chuck? Casanova, of course. Well, then you don't have to change. Hello, Connie. Hi, Chuck. Hey, Alex, let's get out of these things and go home and get everything ready, okay? See you later. I'm ready. Aren't you going to try any costume? <laughs> been robbed. The jewelry, the, the necklace is still there.
Hello. Oh, hi, Commissioner. No, you didn't disturb me. Where? When? What? Okay, I'll get a robbery detail right on it. Yeah, I'll be there in a couple minutes myself, sir. No, it's just a few blocks from me. Good night. Why would they go to all the trouble of opening the safe and not steal the jewelry? Tis a paradox. Tis a paradox? Yes, a paradox. A paradox, a paradox, a most unusual paradox. Ho, 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 a paradox. <laughs> What's, <laughs> What's going on? I used to study singing. I thought I might go into it as a profession. <laughs> yeah, well, you made the right choice. I'm finished, Commissioner. It's all yours. Thank you. This could be a replacement. A fake? Wouldn't they close the door of the safe? That way no one would know that the original had been taken. Well, they might have heard the maid coming home, and then they had to get off in a hurry. The maid didn't come home. She went to the movies with Mildred. Well, something must have scared him off. Connie, who sold you this necklace? Alex bought it for me. It's from Rochemont, an original design. Why? I'd like to have it authenticated. Oh, sure. I'll take it in tomorrow and have it checked. Good. Would you like some coffee? Oh, you must be exhausted. Unless, uh... Oh, no, we'll go. Nothing more we can do here. Mac, thank you very much. Thanks. Sorry it had to happen, Alex. And you, Sergeant. Good night. Good night. I hate to mention it, but there's one more thing you can do for me. Name it. Let me have my necklace back. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Keep it in a safe place. It's Mildred, Mac. What is? Mildred, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I just didn't want to go in the house till somebody came home. How much? Well, that's all right, Mildred. I'll get it. No, thanks. It's my fare. I'll pay it. No, that's... I'll get it. No, really, I insist. I'll do it, Mildred. How much, driver? 970. 970? 970. It wasn't a very long movie. Can't handle that, Mac. Why not? That's a 20. Company policy. We're not supposed to carry a lot of dough. Sally, do you have any cash? Sorry, darling, no. Mildred, can I borrow some money? I don't have any. You don't have any? You just offered to pay the taxi. In fact, you insisted on it. Yeah, but I knew you wouldn't let me. All right, give me what change you got. Sorry, it might help to write City Hall. Why? We could carry more change if we had better protection. And believe me, if there's anything that needs changing in this town, it's that police commissioner. Thanks, Mac. I hope it doesn't get in the papers, Sally. Mm. What? what? What happened? Oh, well, the, uh, the Dusane house was broken into. No! Well, now, Mildred, take it easy. No one was hurt, nothing was stolen. It was just uh, broken into, that's all. Boy, that minestrone was right. A, a soup. He said there was going to be a robbery, only he had the wrong address. How did you like the movie? Did you and Agnes like it? Oh, uh, uh yeah, it was fine. It was a Danish mystery. A lot of naked murderers. <laughs> now, Mildred, as I told you before, no burglar's going to break into this house. We don't have anything of great value. Other than you. You know, Commissioner, for a Scotsman, you got a lot of Blarney in you. Now you just relax and you get a good night's rest. It's easy for you to talk. You got a cop to sleep with. This is one of those inside-out, upside-down cases that my father would have loved. Nothing fits. Well, I'll tell you one thing that fits me in this bed. I'm exhausted. Sally, what did you do to this bed? I put a bedboard in it. it makes my back feel better. You're supposed to put it under the mattress. <laughs> oh. How was I supposed to know? It didn't come with instructions. Or... The floor is softer than this. Why don't we just get down to what's really bothering you? Agnes. Mildred said she went to the theater with Agnes. What's bothering you about that? But she didn't say. 
Mildred, the great warrior of all time. Not one question about her friend. Why, you said right off the bat, <clears throat> nearly the minute that we walked into the door, that nothing was taken, that everyone was okay. True, but not one word like, how is she? Is she upset? Where is she? Why isn't she home? How do you know she's not home? I left instructions with a policeman there to call me when she gets in. Everyone's missing. Agnes is missing. Soup is missing. The man that shot at you, sh shot at you is missing. How did you know that? Will you grab the sheet? Well, Mildred happened to overhear you when you were talking to the policeman. Happened to overhear? Well, Mac, I don't like the idea of you getting shot at. On that particular subject, you can take second place behind me. But right now, I like having you very much in front of me. About your back. You shouldn't have been lifting all that. Feels pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. But who? Who's going to be there? No, wait a minute. Don't hang up. I want to talk. What's wrong? Well, Sue. He's trying to help me. He's frightened. Where are you going? Out. Well, I could have figured out that you were going out. He says I'll meet somebody interesting if I go to the Hammond building. 1201. Do you think it could be big shoes? I don't know. But I'll soon find out. Take care, Mac. It's company policy. What's that for? I don't want to lose my place. <laughs> here yes commissioner i'll be right there uh, no sir uh, i wasn't doing anything just relaxing and reading and catching up on last week's newspaper yeah, goodbye wait up for me He's alive. I'll call an ambulance. I'm going up the 12th floor. Emergency? And right here, send an ambulance squad over to the uh, Hammond building right away, please. Take anything you want, but don't take my life. It's all yours. A anything. How do I call downstairs? Dial four. Enright, it's Big Shoes. He's on his way downstairs. Be careful. But, sir, next time I should be the one to go upstairs alone, and you should be the one to do the phoning. Yes, we'll have to work that out. You're Carlino? Yes, sir. I'm Commissioner of Police. What are you doing here at 2.30 in the morning? Working. The man in the hallway, what was his name and what was he doing here? I haven't got the faintest idea. Maybe he came to rob me. Maybe you had a prearranged meeting with him. Oh, no, sir. No, 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 no. You had no meeting with anyone? 
Hello, Chuck. <laughs> How'd you know I was here? If you're gonna have a secret meeting, you'll have to be a little bit more careful. I saw your name in the log downstairs. A secret meeting with my name on the log? Isn't that what an honest man would do? Well, you're probably wondering why I'm here. You can eliminate, probably. Well, Mr. Carlino's a very good client of mine. He works late and he sleeps late, and he wanted me to buy some stocks for his account first thing in the morning when the market opened. Why didn't you handle it by phone? Um, it was a rather large private transaction in the amount of uh, $45,000 in cash. In cash? I have this problem with my wife. I don't like checks clearing through the account. Where's the 45000 Right here. Excuse me, sir, but Big Shoes got away. The guard okay? Yes, he's on his way to the hospital. This is a friend of mine, Chuck Forrest. Hi. Hi. Henry Contis, will you? Undoubtedly, this explains the presence of the man you were chasing, the robber. He must have known my habits. Neat. Neat, but not gaudy. You can't blame me for going after a nice commission now, can you, Mac? Well, if you don't need me any longer, stockbrokers have to get up and to work at 5 o'clock, remember? Sometimes at 2.15. <laughs> uh, Mr. Corlino, I'll send a bonded messenger over for the money. That's, that's fine. Good night, Mac. Good night, Chuck. Mr. Corlino, let me ask you something. You're a jeweler. Are you by any chance familiar with the Dussain necklace? Commissioner, you're a policeman. Do you really expect me to answer this without the benefit of an attorney? No. But perhaps you'd better alert him. Hi, good book. to learn not to worry. That's what this book is about. What's worrying you? The more involved I get in this case, the more it involves our friends. Alex and Connie were robbed. Soup is hiding someplace, probably in danger. And I just met Chuck in an all-night jeweler's. Sally, women talk to one another. Do you know if any of our friends are having money problems? No. Let's go to bed. Wait a minute. That let's go to bed was not a let's go to bed. It was a let's not talk about it. Let's go to bed. You're so smart. I don't know why I worry about you. Let's go to bed. Sally. It's Alex. Alex. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Forget it. You can't forget something like it. It's Alex. I know, I know. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's my fault. I shouldn't have brought it up. I can't say any more about it. Yes, you can. What about Alex? I promised Connie that I wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> but I'm your husband. Yeah, I, I know, I know. You're my husband to me. But to Connie, you're anybody. Well, Sally, you know that anything you tell me, I'll hold in confidence. I know, Mac, but I was told to hold what I was told in confidence. Now, if I tell you, I'll be violating that confidence in the belief that you will keep the confidence. But what's to prevent you from revealing that confidence to someone that you feel equally confident will, uh, will keep the confidence? Sally, you're withholding evidence. Mac, I'm going to trust you. Good. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Connie indicated that she and Alex were having a little rough go of it financially. Now, about a week ago, when we were all at the theater, I think, now I'm not sure, but I think that Connie was trying to sell the necklace. Well, if you're right, Connie's desperate. 
You don't think she'd arrange to have the necklace stolen so she could claim the insurance, do you? What a terrible thing to say. It's also meaningless, because the necklace wasn't stolen. Let's go to bed. Pa! Oh, sure, you can sleep. You're not guilty. You didn't violate a confidence. I wasn't withholding evidence. I was withholding nothing. Sally. She was confident that I would keep her confidence. But you said that it was evidence, and evidently you think that evidence justifies violating a confidence. Where are we going? To bed. I had that feeling. Who left me this note? Mrs. McMillan. Well, it's in your handwriting. Oh, I know. She was in a hurry. She asked me to write it down. Well, what does it say? She, I don't know. I can't read it. Do you remember what she said to write down? Uh, yeah. She said to tell you that she didn't want to waken you. She was in a hurry, and she'd be at the club decorating the ballroom all day. Doesn't seem to be what I wrote down here. That's good enough. What would you like this morning, Commissioner? Oh, just a cup of coffee. What are you nervous about? Nervous? Yeah, hands are shaking. Uh, yeah, I noticed that. Don't you feel well? I'm feeling guilty, that's what I'm feeling. Commissioner, I'm an accessory. I violated the trust you put in me. What did you do? Well, uh, Commissioner. Commissioner, Agnes never went to the movie. What? Well, she got a headache just before we went in. I said I'd go home with her, but uh, she insisted I stay. And then when you came home and told me her place had been ransacked and you didn't even mention Agnes, well, I didn't know what to say. I didn't want to incriminate her. I called her early this morning. And she never came home. Oh, Commissioner, I've withheld evidence, but I didn't want to violate a confidence. But evidently the evidence that I didn't want to violate was a violation of the confidence that you placed in me. Mildred, are you secretly the mother of that woman I married? Hi, Mac. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Sally, this is urgent. I got a fine suit, and I'll try to put it together. Where did he say he lived? He said Ark, Mac. You sure he said Ark, not Park? Oh, no, I'm sure, Mac, because when he said Ark, I thought of two by two, twins. Wouldn't it be nice to have twins? Yeah. We'll have to get together on that. Bye, Mac. The machine's malfunctioning, sir. How long will it be before we get a report on Agnes? Oh, it shouldn't be very long. Yeah, well, I'm supposed to meet the mayor and... 20 minutes, that is, if the elevator strike is settled. I didn't know the mayor was negotiating the elevator strike. He's not. He's stranded on the 38th floor of the Equitable Building. Oh, that must be Dallas now, sir. What does it say? It says the machine is working, is working, is working. Here it is, Dallas, Texas. Agnes Willoughby, domestic servant. Charged and convicted, 1951, theft of ring. Put out an APB on her. What about big shoes? Anything on him? Nothing as yet, sir, but I've got two men checking every shoe store in town. If you find a pair of tan loafers my size, let me know. What about my friend, Chuck Forrest? Well, the lab reports that it was animal blood on the coat and everything else checks out. He did take an injured cat to the SPCA at the time he stated. Good. What about our friendly round-the-clock jeweler, Carlino? Anything on him? Negative. Anything on soup? Negative. This whole case is negative. Affirmative. We've got to find out where Soup lives. We don't want to lose him. Sir, Mrs. McMillan was the last one to spend any time with Soup. Do you remember if she remembers his saying anything that'll help us? Well, I remember asking her, but she didn't remember anything, remember? <laughs> Great lunch. How'd you ever find that place? A friend of Max, who's a soup freak, told me that they had the best chowder in town. Thanks for picking up the check. Forget it. Next time it'll be your turn. I hope so. May I, may I tell you something in confidence? Absolutely not. Oh, Sally, please. I just gotta talk to someone, and you are my best friend. I... 
Chuck's business is really doing terribly. Please don't tell me. My husband is the commissioner of police. Before that, he was the best criminal attorney in town. He gets everything out of me. He even knows my age, so don't tell me. Noah's Ark. That's it, the Ark. The Ark? That's where he lives. I've got to find a phone. There must be a phone around here. There. Okay, I'll check back in an hour. Ah, don't close this. I have to call my husband. Lady, this is the police call box. Business only. Well, this is a business call. My husband is the commissioner of police. Oh, sure he is. He is. Call him up and ask him. This is an emergency. I am Mrs. McMillan. Tell him I have the soup information that he needs. The soup information? I'm not going to say another word. Now, just call him. Plug me through to the commissioner's office, please. Sir, this is Patrolman Dubowski. There's a young lady here who says she's your wife. Dark? Yes, sir. That too, sir. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're the one. Hi, Mac. Mac, I found the Ark. It's a boat. Where? At the Bay Marina near the entrance. Bay Marina. Sally, you're a credit to my profession. I'll keep an eye out until you get here. No, you go on home. We'll take care of it. I'll be right there, sir. Where am I going? Yes, sir. Schmidt. Do you know him? A patient of mine. I treated him off and on. Was he heading for your boat for a reason? He's been on the boat before. Probably looking for the keys. He's probably going to steal it. Why did you shoot him? Working on my gun, he jumped aboard. I fired. That's all that happened. How did you happen to have him as a patient? Somebody recommended him. I don't remember who. Look, I'm going to the hospital. See how he is. I'll need a report from you later. How you doing? Well, I feel lucky to be alive. That close, huh? Yeah. You know what? What? A sandwich saved me. What? See? The bullet got stuck in the Polish sausage. Where? <laughs> Soup will be all right in a couple days, sir. Wasn't that Big Shoes Commissioner? Yeah. His name is Abel Kleinschmidt. Abel Kleinschmidt. That registers. What are you doing? Oh, I'm uh, programming myself for Kleinschmidt. Oh, 
Would you mind programming yourself in my office? I have work to do. Sure, but uh, can we stop and pick up a sandwich on the way? Sure. My sandwich got wounded. I'll recommend it for a pension. What do you think of this case, Ann? Mm. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I needed that. Commissioner, that, that doctor, he's a, he's a friend of yours, isn't he? Yes, I had ubiquitous friends. Ah. Ah, something's coming back. And right. Kleinschmidt, Abel, armed robbery 59, assault 63. He served five years in prison, but he's no innovator. Somebody has to do his thinking for him. I figured, but who is it? Soup would have the answer, but it'll be a couple of days before we can talk to him. Sergeant Enright, we found this. It fell out of Kleinschmidt's pocket. Oh, thank you. Oh, boy, if I could whistle, I'd whistle. You can't whistle? Mm-mm. Only breathing in, not breathing out. <whistles> See? <whistles> That's for you. Hey, maybe Kleinschmidt was planning to go to that costume ball. I doubt if he was on the guest list. Well... He could have been planning to, uh, to crash the party, take a second crack at the necklace. But why? The necklace we found has to be a fake, otherwise it wouldn't have been left in the safe. Have you heard from Mrs. Dussain? Has she been to the jewelers yet? She said she'd be there about, uh, about 20 minutes from now. Let's go down. If you're lucky, maybe he'll browse your sandwich for you. What's the matter, Mr. Rosemont? Uh, I'm sorry, it isn't this, it's an unbelievable smell. Cheese or sausage. Pardon me, but it really is most distracting and unexplainable. What about the necklace? Oh, there's no question, no question whatsoever. That it's real? Yes. Yes? You're sure? I created it, I know my own work. It's genuine. Thank you. Ah, oh, I feel a lot better. Would you like us to see you home, Connie? Oh, thank you, Mac, but the insurance company insisted I go with their driver. See you tomorrow night. Bye. So long, Connie. And uh, thank you, Mr. Rochefort. Oh, it's a pleasure, Commissioner. Follow her. Oh, you have a suspicion? Nothing that good, but when in doubt, follow her. Right. Ugh. No, sir. No one named Kleinschmidt reserved or rented a costume. All right, if you hear anything, let me know. I'll certainly keep in touch. Thank you. Well, it doesn't make any sense at all, but we've got to cover that party. I can't go on hunches. You've got no tip, no proof, no nothing. We've got a $250,000 necklace at a costume ball and over 100 guests in disguise. But it's impossible to cover the in and outs of a place like that without a detail of at least 20 men. Look, Commissioner. Look, look at all these doors. Corridors, back, side, front entrance. How many men can we spare? Two. Two? All right, three. Four. Okay, okay, five. But five's not enough. Make it six. I've got a solution. Call the party off. Maybe I can talk Connie to say out of wearing the necklace. You do that and I'll kiss you. Don't discourage me. I'll call you and let you know. Connie, do yourself a favor, will you? Don't wear the necklace to that party. Are you telling us that you cannot protect her, Mac? <laughs> Alex, maybe he's right. Oh, come on, Connie, you're going to wear it. Uh, sit down, Mac. No, no, Are you no. sure you don't want to drink? No, thanks, we're going to stay a minute. This isn't fun and games, Alex. There are ruthless people out there who are after that necklace, and I don't want to see anybody else get hurt. It's my duty to warn you of the risk. I know about the risk, Mac. A man doesn't buy his wife a necklace worth a fortune without being aware of the risk. What good is a necklace if a woman can't wear it? That's true. And I can't stop you. I can only tell you you're asking for trouble. Alex, maybe I shouldn't wear it as a favor to Mac. Connie is not worried about your necklace. He's worried about the possible embarrassment to his department. <laughs> Have it your way. I'm supposed to take care of people. And 
You do fall into the category of people. Then take care of us. That's your job. But Connie is going to wear the necklace. Mac, I refuse to live in an atmosphere of terror. Good afternoon. Bye, Mac. You did it again. I did it again. Oh, that's right. Say it like you didn't do it again. Well, I may have done it again, and then again I may not have done it again. Uh, what are we talking about, Sally? I call you with soup information. You go after him. Then what happens? Nothing happens. We don't hear a word. We've been nervous wrecks all day long. should have called the office. I did call the office and didn't know where you were. You didn't call her. She's very worried. You know, she wants me to call you if I've heard anything. Well, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. But the last time you went after soup, you got shot at. Well, we caught him. You did? Thank God. Why couldn't you have called and told us? On Tom's boat. Maybe he wanted to buy it. Tom wants to sell that boat, you know. He wasn't shopping. I was chasing him. How do you know Tom wants to sell his boat? Janet told me. Oh. In confidence. Would you like a drink? Yeah. I could use one. Or two, or uh, three. Oh. I'm sorry I made you worry. I must have. You don't drink so. Mm -hmm. I'm not drinking so. I'm keeping Mildred company. You know, when, when you didn't call, she got very nervous. I had to give her a drink to calm her down. To, to cheer her up. Make her feel better. How's she feeling? Better. I was looking for some gin to make your martini, but I think somebody drank it all. I wonder who that could be. I'll make myself a scotch, Mildred. Thank you for your concern. You really should have called. It wasn't very kind. I'm gonna go make dinner. I think. <sighs> Sally, that necklace isn't a fake. I don't like it. I know why I don't like it. Why do I feel a sudden urge to say why? I don't like it because I have the feeling that every one of our friends knows what's going on, except me. Well, maybe it's money, Mac. All of our friends seem to be having financial troubles. All of them? Uh... Don't tell me. Let me guess. Let's see now. We've covered Alex and Connie, Tom and Janet. So Lori told you in confidence that Chuck needs money, too. I'm not saying a word. You're not saying no? I'm not saying... Everybody's not saying... Clyde Schmidt's alive, but no help. Soup is alive, no help. Agnes is missing, no help. Corlino isn't talking, Chuck isn't talking, Tom isn't talking. Mildred's the only one that's doing some talking, and she isn't making any sense. Cheers. You, Commissioner, it's for you. What is? The phone. Well, I'll take it in here. I already took it in there. Chief Yako. Hmm. Yeah, Chief. Oh, oh yeah? Uh, listen, I, I forgot right. to say if you were in or not. I'm out. in, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah. Well, I, I suppose it would be a good idea, but... Oh, uh, oh you did? I didn't tell him. I it see. was the Macmillan yeah. residence. I'll tell him for you. Okay, Chief. I guess that's the only thing we can do. All right, thank you. Mildred. What did Chief Yako want? I'm wearing a costume tonight. Oh, Mac. I knew you'd come around. Thank you. 
That kiss was under false pretenses. It's business, Sally. Connie's going to wear her necklace, and we don't want it stolen. The chief is going to augment the force, and he feels that a costume would be an excellent cover. Well, you could have lied to me. No, I couldn't. Well, could I lie to me? You didn't want me to feel bad, so you decided to wear a costume. Connie's necklace is just a good excuse to do it. Yes, Sally. I knew you'd do it for me. Mac, are you ready? Mac, are you ready? Yeah. Oh, you look so cute. I'm not going. Mac, you've got to. Besides, that was the only thing they had left. Now, here, I made this finishing touch just for you. I feel like a horse is behind. You don't look like one. Besides, you'd be a bunny's behind. Turn around. Hello? Yeah. Oh. Okay, I'll tell him. Thank you. That was Chief Yakel. He's getting very nervous. The Dusains arrived early. He wants us to hurry. Okay. You know, I always want to ask. No jokes. Remember now, no jokes. Now, let's not hurry. You know what happened? Do you know how fast you were... Okay, Peter Rabbit, let's see your license. Well, I don't have my license, but... Okay, Bugs Bunny, do you want to step out of the car, please, and take a little test? Uh, I'm Commissioner McMillan, and... You know, every rabbit I stop tells me that. But you were driving over the speed limit, and you don't have your license. Now, do you want to step out of the car, please, and take a little test, or I'm going to haul you downtown? He is Commissioner McMillan. Yes, ma'am. Mister, don't do anything we'll both be sorry for. I am Commissioner McMillan, and there's a robbery. A robbery? Now, that's funny, because I haven't heard about a robbery. I am Commissioner McMillan, and the robbery hasn't happened yet. The robbery hasn't happened yet? Then you've got time to take a little test, all right? I want you to walk this line to about, uh... Want to walk that, please? Good luck, Mac. Vehicle checks out. Belongs to a McMillan. Uh, thank you. That was excellent, Commissioner. Bye. Promotion. <laughs> Come on, Mac. We better hurry. McDonagall, everything okay? Good. The commissioner will be here soon. Say a word. Yes, sir. Evening, Mrs. McMillan. Hi, Sergeant Enright. Where have you got your gun? How's everything going? We got 
devils surrounded at every entrance there. I mean, we got them at the archway over there. We've got a devil at the front door, devil at the back door, devil at the bandstand, and then a devil at the punch bowl. Good, where's the chief? Oh, he's over there by the punch bowl, so I'm talking to McGonagall. You know, he's gone out on a limb for us, put on three extra men. Oh, yeah? Dressed as waiters, right? Right. Evening, Chief. Oh, good evening, good evening, good evening. Nice party, you know. Yeah. I see they took away your name and gave you a number. <laughs> yeah, well, I was lucky to get anything the last minute. All they had left was this and some stupid Easter funny outfit. Uh, McGonagall, uh, let's check those. Uh... What was that? That's a red herring. <laughs> I don't see any of our friends. Oh, well, uh, there's Tom and Janet Benton dancing, and uh, there's Laurie Forrest. Where are the Dussains? Oh, uh, they're in the ante room. Let's go say hello to Alex and Tommy. Okay. I'll go look for Mr. Forrest. I hate it when you're like this. I mean, I just, I hate it. I don't want to talk about it. Keep him away from me. <laughs> just a little show of royal temper. Shall we return to our subjects, dear? Wow. Now I believe in the Easter Bunny. Hey, Sally, you have done a fantastic job of converting this mausoleum. I mean, it, it sparkles. Not nearly as much as your necklace. I can see some of the breaths it's taking, including my own. Oh, Mac, relax. Yeah, I will in about four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tom Benton, please. Little Dr. Tom Benton, please go to the phone in the main lobby. That's the penalty for being a good doctor, always on duty. Hi, people. Be back in a minute, I hope. <laughs> yes, I'd like to see the patient's face when he arrives in that outfit and suggests a transfusion. <laughs> Shall we, dear? Excuse us. Hey, mister, you haven't even complimented me on the decorations what? or anything. What? Oh. You could get closer if we dance. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Well, you could get closer. You mean the necklace? For one thing. May I have your tail, Miss Pussycat? It would be my pleasure. <laughs> You're kidding with those feet. Well, I think... Uh... Beauty contests are a vital yeah. part of our society. Hello, honey. Where you been? I've been looking all over for you. Of course you have. <laughs> She's cute for such a big girl. I've got to tell Connie discreetly to stay where we can watch her. Oh, Mac, you were never so graceful. Mac? Mm -hmm. Are you holding something back? Do you have a tip that that necklace is going to be stolen tonight? Yes. I got a tip from me to me. Well, when Alex asked me to dance, you can dance with her and tell her. Ha, ha, ha. What makes you think he's going oh, to do that? Oh, come on. A woman knows those things. <laughs> hey, Alex, would you like to dance with me? Uh, my pleasure. See? Yeah. Here's your tail. <laughs> well, let's see. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Wow, this is a super party. I mean, I've had a dozen invitations to dance. I wonder what they're after. I hope it isn't the necklace. Yeah, me too. Connie, do me a favor, will you? Stay where we can watch you. Sure. Um, how many of you are watching me? Oh, half a squad. Hey, I always wondered, how much is half a squad? And which ones are they? I don't know. You should have bought a program. Oh, you. 
Sally is the most graceful panther I've danced with in years. You are very gallant. That's because I'm Louis II and I try hard. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Everything all right? Yes. How is Clench? Still in a coma. Frankly, Mac, I'm not sure he's going to make it. Is that good for our side or bad for our side? have the rest of the men cover the exits. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chief of Police Yakel. <gasps> They're gone. All right, Connie, tell me exactly what happened. Excuse me. When, the, when, when it got dark, they, they just disappeared. I think I think I felt a scissors. I think they, they, they were just snipped off. Back. Look. Out of my way. Gregorian. You know the customer. Did you find the necklace? Not on the body. Well, we tracked all along the escape route. We couldn't find it either. Mac? I can't sleep. I can. Oh, Mac, my back. You've got tension knots all up and down it. What happened with the fencing lessons? Alex called off? Oh, no. He said it would be good to keep our date tomorrow, keep our minds off things. That's a good idea. Mm. Ah. I can't sleep until I get everything straight. Now, Klein Schmidt was working for Gregorian, and Gregorian masterminded the whole thing, right? I think that there were two people after the necklace. Gregorian and someone else. And the other one got it. And now, good night. You can't say good night after you said someone else got it. How do you know two people were involved? Because there were two plans to blow the lights. Maybe one of them was a backup plan for the other one. I don't think so. Good night. Good night, man. Mac, who do you think was after the necklace? If I answer that, will you let me get some sleep? Yes. I don't know. Matt, you must have some idea who was after it. Well, it was. Whoever fired the gun. How do you know it wasn't Gregorian who fired the gun? There would be nitrate residue on his sleeve. The gun wasn't traceable, but whoever fired it will have traces of nitrate on his sleeve. I know that. I used to do the gunpowder test for my dad. And now let's get some sleep. Okay. Mac, you think that one of the people that we've known for a real long time could have been pressured into doing something like this about a What? Do you think one of our friends did it? Well, if you're asking if one of our friends an attempted murderer, the answer is yes. Well, I can't hear a word you're saying. I said, yes, it's possible. Come on, you'll never guess. Oh, I didn't knock. I always knock. I mean, I knock even when there's no reason to knock. I should have knocked. Come in, Mildred. 
Commissioner Agnes is downstairs. She feels very badly that she didn't go to the police, but she was afraid the police would think she'd done it because of her record, and then she'd get fired. Agnes, what happened Wednesday night? She came home with a terrible headache, and she saw that big man open the safe and take out the necklace. She was terrified. Go on, Agnes. He looked at the necklace and put it back in the safe and then turned around and saw her watching him. Oh, she ran. Agnes, now this is important. If you had a headache, why didn't you stay home? Because Mr. and Mrs. Dusain insisted that she go out. Agnes, is that true? Thank you, Agnes. You've been very helpful. Commissioner, you've made Agnes very happy today. I don't think Alex and Connie are going to say the same. Mac, it wasn't a fake. Kleinschmidt and Gregorian knew it was a fake. That's why they left it in the safe. It was not a fake. You had a copy made, didn't you, Connie? Why would I put a copy in the safe? Because of your husband. You didn't want him to know you'd allowed the real necklace to be pawned. Mac, you were there when the jeweler authenticated my necklace. The authentication was what created the problem. You made Chuck go down to Corlina's and borrow the real necklace. Chuck? Oh, come on, Mac. You were followed when you left the jewelers. The detectives saw you and Chuck exchanging packages. You obviously switched back to the phony necklace to wear at the ball. Boy. I feel safe in a city with a police commissioner as perceptive as you are. Connie, if Chuck dies, you could be an accessory to murder. Do you understand that? Now, for the last time, was that necklace a fake? Yes. All right. Now I need to know who stole the necklace at the ball. Why don't you just go on? You seem to have theorized it beautifully. I think you stole your own necklace to cover up the deception, which is not a crime, Connie, unless you file an insurance claim. The only thing you're guilty of so far is a lover's indiscretion. I stole the necklace myself. I needed money. Poor Chuck? Yes. So he could cover stock manipulations. I love him. So you did it for Chuck. And Alex did it for you. Alex. He didn't want you to know he needed the money. He was afraid he'd lose you. So he set up the first robbery with Gregorian to get the insurance money. For me? There's a bitter irony in it, Connie. If Alex hadn't stolen for you, he never would have found out about your infidelity. Alex shot Chuck? Yes. Enright. Yes, sir. Get on down to Gregorian's and check Alex's costume before it's dry cleaned. The possibility it might have nitrate on the sleeve. I'll pick up Alex. Yes, sir. Do you want to stay here a while? Can I? Sure. I need a minute or two to catch my breath, sort out my life. Stay as long as you like. Very reasonable rates. You're, you're a very special man, Mac. I, I hope Sally realizes that. I remind her of it every night. If you need anything, ask my secretary, huh? You know, I'm really looking forward to this, Alex. But I've got to warn you, I only know two things about fencing. Douglas and Fairbanks. <laughs> Don't worry, Sally. I'll teach you. OK. Pick a foil. One that feels good to you. Try this. Good? Follow me. Good. Oh, Alex, here's your costume. I'll return it for you. I've got to take ours back, too. Oh, no. Thank you, Sally. I'll bring it back myself on Monday. $27.50 a day? Not to mention the weekend. You'll be losing. I'm glad to do it, Alex. No, thank you, Sally. Listen, I'm going there anyway. Why not? Anyway, this one needs cleaning. It's got, um, looks like nitrate. 
tray. Um, on the sleeve. You're a very bright girl, Sally. But that was very stupid. What do you know? Well, I don't know if I know what I know. I mean, I probably don't know half as much as I know, you know? Why don't we start fencing? We are fencing, Sally. Oh, maybe we better quit. You put yourself in a very unfortunate situation. Alex, if you've got something to hide, well, uh, why don't you just go to Mac and tell him? I'm sure he'll do everything he can to help you. No, that's not my nature, Sally. You don't know me. Alex, you broke the tip off your foil. I regret to say that there's going to be a terrible fencing accident. On guard! Ah! I can't kill you outright, Sally. I'll have to make it look like an accident. Kill me? You're not kidding. I am afraid not. Ow! Alex, stop this. You don't want to kill me. That's true, but I have to. Fight back. How can I? Alex, stop this. Alex, stop this! Alex! I'm leaving, Mac, and she's leaving with me. Don't be foolish. Hold it. One more step, Commissioner, and you'll be a widower. Come on. Oh, oh Mac, here. Go on, go on. Do that. Get me the police. Right. Yes, sir. Burglary, attempted murder. Listen, Commissioner, next time, you should pick up the clothing and I should pick up the suspect. Yes, and right, we'll have to work that out. <gasps> oh, I'm glad it's over. Guess what? My back is fine. I think it was the fencing. Oh, good, good. Now we can take the board out of the bed. Be my pleasure. Hello? Yes, this is he. Right. Good. Okay. What was that? Good news. The soup. It's going to be okay. Oh, good. Mildred? I thought you might be interested in knowing you can rest easy. The man who comes through windows is going to be just fine. And from now on, we'll come through the front door. And don't disturb us, Mildred. <laughs> yeah, we will. And thank you. Good night. That was sweet of you to need an excuse to call Mildred so that she wouldn't disturb us. Well, I mean, now that the board's coming out of the bed. Sally? Sally? I got to lock it on the floor, Mac. <laughs>